Joining me now is Trent Mel, CEO of Electra Battery Materials. Great to see you again. Thanks again, Mark. Lots to talk about. We spoke a few months ago. We'll get to all the latest developments, but uh, maybe just a quick recap for maybe uh, some of those people who may not know about the mission and then the mandate at Electra to essentially, as you say, be the, the greenest cobalt producer on the planet and to be the first and, and foremost one and only one in North America. Yeah, I, I think as when I articulate who Electra is, the, the simplest answer is probably to say that we're a counterweight to China's dominance over cathode materials. They control 80% of refining capabilities worldwide. Electra's job is to change that by being the first refiner of cobalt here on the continent. Now, uh, a few months ago, you hinted at the possibility of some uh, government investment. It seems like it, it may have come in a little earlier than expected, a $5 million grant yeah. from the federal government. So that's clearly showing their commitment yeah. to the sector, but your your company, uh, not yeah. yours, but, uh, you know, Electra. And also it shows validation. So what's the significance? Yeah. Now, the validation, you're bang on. I yeah. think that's what it is. This is, to me, this is part one, right? We, we've got $200 million U.S. of replacement value at our refinery up north of Toronto, it permits and infrastructure. It's even operating, right, running some black mass. So the cobalt plant still needs another 60 million US of investments. So the 5 million, it doesn't get us there, but it is validation. Obviously the market like that. Um, but there are a few other points of validation that I'm working on that I hope to be able to share soon. Um, so so a good first start um, and extremely appreciative for that. But uh, we got a little more work to do still. Uh, we know that you have uh, LG Energy Solutions in there as a partner. You said before you've had many talks with the potential partner. So can you give us uh, any updates there? Yeah, yeah. You know, what I've told shareholders is, you know, our, our objective here as a management team is to try to pursue a largely non-dilutive funding solution. And so that's looking at government programs. That's looking at industry partners downstream, maybe looking at to the metal traders or other industry participants. So that's that's been the bulk of the focus right now is to try to, you know, stay away from so the straight debt and equity, making really good progress. Um, I, I do, like I'm smiling, <laughs> 5 million was a start. I, I, I think it's coming together. Um, I'm gonna need a little bit more time, but I, we've got re- a lot of reasons to be very optimistic that, that as we, now we've got like 37 battery cell plants that have been announced across North America. They're not all gonna get built. And what I'm seeing is a shift of the funding programs away from, okay, the downstream to what do we need in the midstream? Refining, precursor and cathode manufacturing. We're not yet at a point where programs are targeting the mines, but this midstream has become a policy priority for a lot of governments, and I think we stand to benefit from that. Trent, you touched on uh, your black mass uh, demonstration recycling trial, which uh, went for about a year or so. Yeah. Uh, it's been a success. The team is going to uh, put out a report. They're working on it right now. So um, what is the, uh, what's the what's the update on the recycling program and, and, and the future, do you think, of that? Yeah, in fact, we do have the internal report done. Okay. So we've got a press release out explaining some of the accomplishments. The report we have actually is going to lead to a couple of patents that we've got to file. So we, we ran it for 12 months at the existing refinery building that we had acquired a few years back that we're building around for the cobalt plant. So that was recommissioned. Permits are there in the team and the lab. Um, and, and we wanted to take our black mass process that we developed and go from the lab scale to pilot to a, to a plant scale. And that demonstration plant, albeit it was on a batch basis, not continuous, it accomplished a lot just in terms of validating in an uncontrolled environment at scale, what happens to the material. And um, we changed our flow sheet around, we changed some of the reagents, we learned a lot. And so that those lessons now come back in this report. There's some detailed engineering we need to do around that. And and we've talked about a multi-phase strategy, cobalt, nickel, and, and recycling. And so now we've got, from a metallurgical perspective, we got a good handle on two of those three steps. Now, as we look through the rest of 24, can you sort of yeah. uh, sum it all up for us in terms of the advancing the refinery, Black Mass, potential partnerships. You've got the uh, the partnerships with uh, Three Fires. Right. Uh, you've talked before about the possibility of a, uh, and maybe you can update us on Beconcourt in Quebec and if there's sure. a yeah. possibility of another refinery there. And uh, and again, just the, uh, you know, what's 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 the focus for the, the rest of the year? So focus, I think, is cobalt. So when we, when we paused the cobalt project early last year in the face of some pretty serious inflation, we presented the market with two options, right? Get the funding, complete the cobalt plant, or pivot towards recycling first. And we, we did a, a desktop study on a smaller, less capital intensive solution. Um, with the conversations we're having on the funding solution, I do think it's going to revert back to, you know, cobalt first, recycling second. But but that met site, that hydrometallurgical plant does have optionality and we're going to lever it accordingly. But yes, we've been invited to build a second plant in uh, in Bacocor, in Battery Valley, as they call it, GM, POSCO, Ford, BASF, lots of players there. Um, 
we're not dedicating a lot of capital to that yet, but we do have a letter of intent and we do have a, our plot of land waiting for us. Um, partnerships for us, uh, if I look at the commercial side, whether it's getting product in the refinery to process or sale of final product, we're, we're more than sold out. Uh, we've got 80% for five years going to LG. The remaining 20 has been um, accounted for several times over. And with the rules in, in Canada, sorry, in the US rather, on Chinese ownership thresholds, in order to maintain your eligibility for IRA vehicle credits, uh, our phone's been ringing. People are realizing they can't keep buying out of China. Um, and lastly, three fires, you mentioned that, uh, important relationship. So where they fit in to the equation is really on the, the battery shredding. So collecting battery scrap, potentially from battery plants that are in their traditional territories, collecting it, working with us to do the shredding, and then providing us with that material. And so that JV, instead of fleshing out that agreement, uh, is an ongoing conversation we're having and hope to have some news on that soon. Lots on the go, lots of potential catalysts. Uh, I, I know you rather not touch on the stock, but we see it's, it's been picking up. So yep. very good. Thanks a lot, Trent. All right. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Appreciate it. Good stuff. Trent Mal, CEO of Electro Battery Materials.